Hey, everyone out there in Hollow Point land, coming at you live from the corona-free environment. It's a corona-free Hollow Point place. Guys, what I'm wanting to show to you is even though the country is in lockdown, there is no need and no reason we shouldn't put our best foot forward. So with that in mind, I thought I would dress for the occasion. This way, as we're looking at air rifles and hollow points, well, gentlemen, during these coronavirus times, we're going to be doing a lot more indoor testing until the weather is nicer outdoors. And since we've got a snowstorm coming in, we're doing more indoor testing. What we're going to play with today, unboxing, is the Air Force Texan 308 LSS. That is right. This is the 308 version of the Texan LSS. That is the suppressed long barrel setup system. And we'll bring the camera in here and get a closer shot. So instead of focusing on me and my good looks, we're focusing on the product at hand. The Texan 308 LSS. So we're opening this up. You got your manual, with all your pertinent information, and there's a, there's a DVD and your toolkit. We're pulling this open. Ah! Coronavirus! Oh, my mistake, it was a moth. Woo! <laughs> so, we have our standard 3000 PSI 308 bottle. And you can tell it's got the smaller hat or head on it that compared to the 457 and the 50 cal. Um, at the moment, they don't have a TX2 valve set up for the small bores, uh, but that doesn't mean they won't in the future. Uh, we have our additional can with additional uh, baffles in it kind of a what I call a micro threading that just screws on the end here it doesn't take any uh, tools or degree in mechanical engineering just screw that on nice and snug we'll put that here put this here and there's not a whole lot of uh, rocket science involved with these Texans, which is pretty cool. Back down there. And put that over there. So, as we investigate while I'm wearing my fancy suit and tie, and guys, I want you to check this out. Matching ensemble. That's right. I'm too sexy for this shirt. Too sexy for the. Okay. Now let's get our tools. Tools? What tools? The tools we've been using for the last 10 years. Oh, those tools. Um, it's kind of nice, is I believe, don't quote me on this, but most of the. Uh, nuts and bolts you know the set screws and so on are kind of the same you know throughout the gun so this is our spin lock so what i like to do is loosen that so it's kind of spinning and this is always an aggravation area but it's not that big of a deal Since my fingernails are kind of broke off, I'm just kind of spinning the, the lock collar here, the spin collar, trying to keep this, so there's no tension on it. I personally hate that little wrench, that's just me. Um, but like with all the Texans, um, I like to get the bottle snugged up as tight as I can.
yeah there we go so I start feeling the tension and then start to torque it down by hand so now at this point I've got it almost to where I want it I will tighten the lock the spin lock ring with a little set screw and then give the bottle a little more snug um, almost but not quite there so we're gonna undo that loosen this and then go there we go that's more like it you know it's gonna take a couple of attempts to get it just where you want it and that is looking good y'all folks seems to be hooking up good so there it sits in the beginning now I'm gonna go ahead and add a butt pad and uh, throw a a little picatinny on the bottom so I can put a bipod on it and I'm gonna throw a rail on top so I can put the scope on it of course it's never a Mr. Hollow Point special until I add all my ding-dongs uh, bells and whistles knickknacks and other accoutrements gadgets and tchotchkes be right back with you so uh, I threw on just a little tiny Picatinny rail here at the bottom and this just happened to be like a Harris type bipod that I had laying around so I just threw that on there because it was laying around uh, now I'm putting on my extended Mr. Hollow Point Picatinny rail uh, because you know when you're changing out scopes all the time like I do it's best to have something that's a kind of a universal fit all right okay so now this rail has two stop screws on top and what I like to do is once I have it where I want it I mean I'm just snugging it up I'm not uh, you know putting 50 pounds of torque as I'll pull the screw out tap that with a drill bit just make a dimple so this can drop in there and act like a proper set screw so that way uh, uh, you know it's it's locked and stopped not that the 308 is going to give you that much juice uh, compared to the 50 but I like doing that so nothing moves and there's you know Mr. Picatinny rail sitting on top via Mr. Hollow Point the other thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to move this butt plate out a little bit so I can put one of these little $7 pieces on there from Amazon. Um, that works out really, really nice. Because um, it, it fits in the gun rest much, much better. Uh, doesn't slide around as much. Just slips on. It's not rocket science. If I can do it, you can do it. And said all the Allen wrenches and uh, the little wrench for the uh, spin lock come in the package. Boom chaka laka laka. 308, ready to go. Once you throw a scope on there. Look at that. This will be profile setting number four. Beautiful. Alrighty. Um we're going to fill it up to 3,000. We'll fill it slow. Now, I'm running this through the booster pump, even though I don't need the booster pump. 
you know, it's just a straight through. And I've opened it to take any pressure off the valve stem from being depressed. So it's slowly filling. I'm gonna let it I'm gonna let it fill slowly so it doesn't overheat in the beginning. This is the first fill. So if you fill it up real hot, you're gonna have to wait until it cools down to get your actual pressure and temp. So in the meantime, while this is filling, I will just kind of hang out here and look really handsome. set up two thousand and I can feel it getting warm but it is filling slowly twenty five hey, no sense in the whoa you know and then your bottles overheated I'm not about to melt any type of uh, rubber o-ring or anything by just cranking it wide open. We're almost there. 32. I mean 28, 29, 30. I'm going to go to 31. And close it. And I'll let it now cool down. So with that being said, we'll get ready to shoot here in a minute bullet seating so fellas here is the 133 that's it that's all I do just snug enough to fit the 150 Hopefully the zoom isn't making my fingers go wonky or making everything fuzzy. You're getting the idea. You don't mash the bullet in flush. Here's the 202. Look how big that, that honker is. That's it. I mean, you can mash it if you want, but it doesn't need to be mashed. Bullet placement. You can see just on all the Texans. There is a bit of flesh sticking out, as they say. All right, 3,000 PSI. 130 gram. This is how gentlemen shoot. Alright, Mr. Burns, this is for you. Now, I cited this in just a bit ago for the 202 grain. Going to be slightly off with the 130 from the scope adjustment. Look at that group it's holding. Loving this 308 LSS, buddy. Loving it. 
Let's go look at some numbers. So, with our initial first round of testing in the ye old basement here, 133, 269 foot-pounds, 150 grain, 896, 276 foot-pounds, 160 is right next door, 277 to 165. 264 foot pounds and the big 202 295 just under 300 foot pounds these are big slugs uh, i haven't played with the lightweight but i will but i always do the big ones first because i'm mostly concerned with pig hunting or deer hunting and then we work backwards to the smaller like coyote very powerful very very excellent on air consumption as you can see, with the lighter of the big bullets, we're generating about 200 PSI per shot. Start moving these bigger, heavier slugs. It starts out using 200, and then it's more like 100, at least as I'm reading the gauge. The bottom line is we still end up at about 2,300, on 2,300, 2,400 left in the bottle after five shots. Um, which is pretty good. I'm going to try to show you a close-up picture of where I've got the uh, power dial set. Let's take a look at that. Okay, the power dial setting, as I'm drawing, I drew this because I'm not sure if the photo will come out. So here's the bottle on this side, the muzzle on that side. So you know which way the gun is facing. Um, that's the last mark on each end. There's the center, and then there's a the quarter front and a quarter back. I am right about here. with the setting okay I'm not on it I'm a little more than the halfway point um, but I'm not quite on it and that's where I found on these heavier slugs that's where I'm putting it right now that's where I'm getting the best first shot and second shot okay so that's this is maxed out and you're as you're going you know bottom out and then work your way forwards and that's what I did I bottomed it out and then I've been testing bullet bag after bullet bag. It's been working and watching the numbers steadily climb, climb. And then when I got here, it started going, they started dropping. Okay, so that gave me, you know, your power curve. It's kind of like this. It was slower, faster, 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 fastest. Slower, slower, slow, slow, slow. Okay, so that's, this is the power curve. All right, that's where that is. That's where I've on the heavier bullets. This is where we're at. And, you know, we've been testing. Watch my big head. 133 to 202 grains. Later on, I'll do the lightweight bullets, but this is where we're at with the heavy bullets. Okay, hopefully that's self-explanatory, because I am wearing my explanatory suit. Okay, here's my attempted close-up of the 130. 
150, 160 solid, 165, and 202. These are what we were shooting in our initial testing. Um, so it's pretty interesting, guys. I'm having a lot of fun here. And we got a lot of power coming through this uh, 308. So, guys, class is dismissed for the 308 for today. We've done as much as we can do. We ran close to 400 bullets through testing the power dial, trying to figure out where the optimum spot was. And you've seen we showed you that here in the video. Um, what the foot pounds of energy, we were basically with a 130. I know in the picture I said 133, but it's a 130 to a 202, 269 foot-pounds up to 295 foot-pounds. So we're right there at the just three quarters into 300 foot-pounds, however you want to divide that if you are English. Um, that's kind of we're wrapping it up with, you know, being house buggy and locked in the house at the moment. Uh, I'm really happy with this. I want to thank Air Force. Terrific job, as always. Um, take off my specs so I can see you guys better. Uh, this is the goofy bipod setup I put on there just so we can sit. Um, normally I got a different setup, but this one was laying loose, so I just threw it on there. Um, picked any rail, scope, laser just for backup. Very quiet, very quiet with this can on here. Very happy. Uh, you guys are looking at a 308. I think you'd be really happy with this. So, said we just did some heavy bullet testing for number crunching. Later on, we'll do some light bullet number crunching. And when it gets a little warmer outside, we'll stretch out at, at the range and do the same thing. Do the heavy bullet accuracy and the light bullet accuracy and we figure out where the power dial needs to be set for the lighter bullets i'll have that in the diagram also when we do that video so this really i guess is going to be part one of however many we're going to do so stick along keep watching i'll try to bring you some informative information and at the same time be a bit of a clown that i am thanks for watching and be healthy and stay away from that damn coronavirus. My dear fellows, this is our punishment for associating with the hoi polloi.